Hello, I'm Mr. Franklin, and today we're going to be looking at our objectives for Unit 6 and introducing some of those concepts. First thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the concept of the mole. Then we're going to use the mole to calculate how many ions, how many atoms, and all kinds of ways of counting different pieces of molecules and compounds so that we can perform in the lab and do calculations. Then we're going to, to do that though, we're going to have to learn how to do some dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a process that we can use to very simply convert complex units into something that we can work with. And that's really what we're going to be looking at today. So for this video, we're going to learn how to perform simple dimensional analysis. We're going to look at and go back to some basic unit conversions that you probably learned back in elementary school. We're going to learn maybe a new process on how to do it. So why are we using this? We're going to use this to make to do all kinds of different conversions so we can use measurements that we're going to make in the lab, convert it into a format that we can work with in, in our calculators and on our paper, and then we can go back and measure things out and, and anticipate what's going to happen in the lab. Bottom line, it's going to make life easier for us later on. This process is very powerful and it's going to be used the rest of the semester in almost every unit that we do. Kind of like a lot of the things that we've been doing. They build from one thing to the next and they keep building on the previous thing. So the other thing that's really cool about this process is you can use it to figure out answers to problems without necessarily remembering or knowing an equation if you're smart about your units and what the units actually mean. With that said, how will you know that you've learned it at the end of this video? You should be able to convert from one unit to another unit of the same type of measurement using one step. In, in the later videos, we're going to learn how to do more complex conversions using multiple steps. The other way that you're going to know is you're going to be able to practice using 10 practice problems that I'm going to either have linked to either in the video or in the notes for you to practice and try out and to test your skills and see if, if you know these. Before we begin, we are working towards more complex versions of what we're about to learn. Many of the examples I've given you are simple examples that you can either do in your head, that you can use cross multiply and divide, which is a method you learned probably back in elementary to do this. You can Google it. You can find online calculators that do all kinds of conversions. I've given you, I'm going to give you simple examples that you can prove or answer in other ways so that you can test if you've done the process correctly. So this is really important. You can find the answers other ways. I'm giving you, going to give you simple problems so you can test that you're finding the correct answer with this process. So with that said, I'm going to be grading the work that you're going to show. I'm going to be grading the process and not necessarily the answer. Yes, later on the answers are going to be important. And I am going to be giving, I am going to be grading them. But I might only take one point off. Whereas I will take five points off for work that's missing. Okay? So just keep that in mind as we go. So let's begin. We're going to be working towards converting grams to moles. We're going to convert, say, 28 grams of H2O or water to moles of water. A mole is a unit of measurement that tells us how much of a substance we have. It's related to mass, and it's used in writing our chemical equations. All of your balanced chemical equations that you might have done in eighth grade and in previous grades, the units those were actually written in was in moles. And so we're going to do a lot of work with moles. But before I get into that at all, we need to practice converting some units. So let's, let's take a look. We're going to start with some basic things. So we're going to do this by converting feet to inches, and we're going to convert three feet to inches. Now, most of us should be able to look at that and go, there's 12 inches in a foot, so 3 times 12 is 36. So I should have 36 inches as my final answer. Okay? But that's not what we're here to learn. We're here to learn this process, and so here are the process. So we're still going to use the guess method, our given, unknown, equation, substitute, and solve. 
given unknown equation, substitute and solve. And here's how we're going to do it. So we're given a value, are given, we're given three feet. Okay, and then we're going to write our conversion factor. So in one foot, there are 12 inches. Okay, and what are we looking for? What is our unknown? We are looking for the number of inches. What are we looking for? We're looking for the number of inches. So here's how we're going to do this process. We're going to write our given measurement on a line of division. So I'm going to draw a line and that means divide. That's a division line just like a fraction. Okay, like we would write 2 divided by 5. That's what this line means. Okay, so we're going to take our unit that we're given, 3 feet is what we're given, and we're going to write the conversion factor Let's put a little R there. Conversion factor on the line in a way that the units cancel out. So if I take my conversion factor, I can write it as one foot for every 12 inches, or 12 inches for every one foot. So I can write it as a fraction. And I'm going to pick one of these so that I can put it on the line so that the feet will cancel out. So which one am I going to pick? I'm going to pick this one. Why? Because feet are on top, feet go on bottom, and then I'm going to put my 12 inches on top. So what's going to happen? Feet are going to cancel. 3 times 12 is 36 inches is the unit that's left, divided by 1, which is just that. Okay? So that would be my final answer. So now I've solved it. It's pretty straightforward. The confusing part is this part right here, is why am I writing this? So what you need to know is, just like I can write 2 over 2 equals 1, right? So I can write 2 over 2 equals 1. 12 inches over 1 foot, that's the same distance in measurement. So because it's the same distance in measurement, am I changing what this actually represents, what this means? No. So this is really saying one foot divided by 12 inches technically is equal to one. What's one times anything? This original value, right? So one times three is still three. So is 36 inches, is that changing the value of the measurement. It is still three feet. So this is the process. I know it's confusing, but let's take another look at it. Let's try it. Let's try another one. We start with our given, which is 12 feet. Our conversion factor is one foot is equal to 12 inches. What's our unknown? Our unknown is we are looking for inches. So I'm going to write my given, which is 12 feet, on a line of division. And which one goes on the bottom? I have feet here, so I'm going to write feet here. But now I go to my conversion factor. What number goes with that? One. I'm going to put inches on top, right, because it's feet to inches. What number goes with the inches? The 12. Now I multiply across the top. 12 times 12 is 144 divided by 1 feet divided by feet cancel and I'm left with inches so that is equal to 144 inches okay I um, hope that you're gonna start seeing a pattern here when we do the next two so we've got 35 feet to inches so we're we start with 35 feet our conversion is still one foot equals 12 inches. What are we looking for? We are looking for inches. So let's set it up. We write our given on the line. We're going to write, we could even do this totally looking at the, the units. because we know we got feet, feet compared to inches. So I'm going to write feet on the bottom. Why? Because feet divided by feet cancels and leaves me with inches. So now I have 12 inches 
and one foot. So now I go and I multiply those. So 12 times 5 is 60, 36, 42. So 420 inches is equal to 35 feet. Okay? So that would be your final answer. Okay. Try this one on your own. So pause the video, try this one, and then we're going to move on to some other uh, practice problems and some other units. Okay, so hopefully you've unpaused the video, and now let's check what you've got so far. We've got our given of 24 inches, 1 foot equals 12 inches. We're looking for feet. 24 inches is what we have, so we write inches on the bottom because we want the inches to cancel each other out. And now we have this. Now this is where it gets confusing for some people. You gotta remember this is a line of division. And the first thing I do is I multiply across it to the top, which is easy. 24 times 1 is just 24 divided by 12. So I should have 2 feet. So here are some common conversion factors that you should um, write down. Um, I would even encourage you to memorize them and some of them you may already have memorized. But we're going to use these for our practice to get us used to this process. Okay? So let's change it up a little bit. Let's try a couple that are different. So we still write our given, 13, 45 feet. But I'm converting to miles. So let's go back to our conversion factor. One mile equals 5,280 feet. One mile equals 5,280 feet. Okay, what is my unknown? What am I looking for? I'm looking for miles. Okay, so I'm going to start with what I was given, which was 1345 feet. So that's the step. Next step is feet is here, so feet has to go on the bottom. What am I converting to? I'm converting to miles. Okay? So now my convert now I can put the numbers in. So there's one mile in my conversion factor, 5,280 feet. So now I'm going to plug in my calculator. 1345 times 1, which is 1345, divided by 5,280. 255. Five. What units? Feet cancel, so what am I left with? Miles. Does that check? Yes, it does. Okay, try this one. Pause the video, try this one on your own. Three hours to minutes. And don't forget to use your conversion factor here. Check your answer and see if this is what you've got. If you have any questions, please, on how I did this, then please ask me. So now what you need to do is you have a series of practice problems that I want to see your work because eventually what we're working to is we're working to where we will convert say miles to inches which means we're going to have another step in the middle here because of our conversion factors so we're going to have one mile is how many inches so one mile goes on top there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Uh-oh. Anybody see a problem with what I just did? Is the miles and miles going to cancel? They can't, can they? So it has to be written on the bottom. Why? Because we start with miles, miles goes on the bottom. So one mile, 5,280 feet. In one foot, there are 12 inches. Now we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide the two answers and you should get an answer. Okay? Which in this case will be six, nine, 24, 33, 63, 63, 60. Divided by one, which is 63, 60, What's the units? Miles divided by miles cancel, feet divided by feet cancel, and we're left with inches. Okay, this is what we're working towards, okay? So before we can really 
practice that, I want you to go ahead and I want you to practice doing it with a simple single step. I want to see the line. I want to see your conversion factors. I want to see you cancel them out because we're building to more complex lines and more complex chains. That is where we're going with this. All right. If you have any questions, please ask, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.